Hi, I'm Matt with Focus Training, and today we're going to talk a little bit about negotiating salary. We recently got an email from one of our training participants, and this person asked us for some advice because they were about to go in to negotiate a new contract for a new role. Now this is a conversation that for a lot of professionals can be very difficult or even intimidating. Uh, it should be a really exciting opportunity. Maybe you're starting a new job or have just been promoted and you're looking forward to some of the perks that come along with that, but how do you talk about it? So today we're going to share three tips and then in a follow-up video, part two, we'll share three more tips. So first let's start with today's tips. Number one, it's important that you go in armed to this conversation with the information that will help you have the conversation intelligently. So what this means is, you need to know your market value. There's a lot of information available out there on the web, so check out sites like Indeed.com and Glassdoor. There's many others, uh, but these can give you some average uh, salary ranges for your role in your region of the country and for organizations like yours. Now, it's even better if you can get inside information about your organization. Some companies or organizations uh, post or share the salary ranges for certain positions or a starting salary that is standard for a certain position. And that can give you at least a ballpark for where you want to be talking in terms of salary range. Don't forget to take your own experience into account relative to those averages. If you are a, an HR student who's just graduated from college, you may not be starting at the median point for an HR generalist in the industry. Vice versa, if you've had 25 years of experience, you may be on the higher end. Second, remember to negotiate on benefits as well. Some organizations simply will not have the flexibility to pay more in salaries, but some can make up uh, some of that in the rest of the benefits package. So it's important to know what is important to you and what your deal breakers are. You can be flexible in some areas that are less important and be firm and direct about the areas that matter to you. If it's critical that you have a flexible schedule, that may compensate for uh, a lower salary in your mind, uh, or maybe vacation time or other benefits are important to you. So remember that it's about the whole package. Third, be prepared to talk about what you are contributing. Remember, on the other side of the table, this is a discussion about return on investment. Uh, you are a human resource. You're part of an organization's human capital. So if they're going to invest more in you, it's important that they see very clearly what they're going to get back. So come into the conversation prepared to talk about, almost like you're back in an interview, what it is that you've done to make a measurable impact on the organization. Pull some data. Uh, if you can say, I've directly contributed $150,000 in increased revenue to this department over the last six months. That is a very clear demonstration of added value versus a statement like, I work really hard. These three important tips, knowing your market value, negotiating on benefits, and being prepared to talk about what you contribute are a good start. We'll have three more tips to share with you in the next video, so keep an eye out for part two.